Plastic Galaxy Toy Store. How you guys doing today on this Sunday afternoon? Hope you guys are doing well. Sunday, it's all Sunday afternoon chat action. Always been uh, about to get on here every once in a while and see how you folks are doing. I've been busy doing other things here and there, but every once in a while I do have to get on here and, and see how it's going with you guys. We do have a sale tonight. Uh, some, uh, got some, got in some new G1 Transformers. You can see back behind me, maybe here and there. You can't see. I got a bunch scattered about. But uh, some Transformers tonight, those always are good for us, as well as just some other stuff too. So, what's up Hunter? Hope you're doing well. Uh, seeing what's going on out there in the interwebs today. Let me do some real fast. Let's housekeep, housekeep them real quick. There you go. Uh, let's just replace that. Okay, cool. Boom. How's everybody doing? Let's see. Let me check them out real fast. Houston. Okay, let's see what's up here. What's up, Eric? What's up, man? Hope you guys, hope everybody out there is doing, having a great Sunday. It's supposed to get a little cooler around here today, so that's always good. I mean, it is kind of technically fall, so I'm all ready for the fall weather. Oh, yeah, man. I've seen it already. I'm waiting for season three to come out. <laughs> That's a great, it's a great show. Um, um, it's like one of the only shows that I've, uh, there's two shows that I really like that came out in the last couple of years. Uh, one of which was Cobra Kai and um, also Ozark. I like that one as well. And I'm sure there's others out, <clears throat> sure there's others out there, but I just had the time to, the time to tune into those, you know, but they're great, great shows. For those who don't know, uh, Cobra Kai is now on Netflix, so you can check it out. It was on YouTube for a while, but I guess Netflix bought up the license for them, or bought up the, uh, the rights for it. So it's on Netflix. You got Netflix, Cobra Kai, Season 3 is coming out next year. Uh, also, of course, Mandalorian is my other favorite. There's like three of my favorite shows going on right now. Okay, good, man. You should, I mean, that's, Cobra Kai is great. I mean, if you're a Karate Kid fan, or even if you're not a Karate Kid fan, it's, it's something a little different. Lots of tie-ins to, the, uh, to the, uh, the movie, obviously. But uh, uh, in a good way. They did a really good job. But the story is really good, and the characters are great. Um, and just some interesting, interesting stuff going on. So we'll see how what happens in season three, right? Uh, that really took off like crazy. Yeah, Cobra Kai. Uh, that one with um, oh, what's the other one? Uh, like I said, uh, Ozark was one of my, my favorites. Favorites also on Netflix, and then of course The Mandalorian on on Disney. Right, three good shows, and I was saying there's more out there. I understand that. It's three that I've been kind of tuning into. What's up, Tony Johnson? Okay, cool. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, don't have one right now, though, Eric. How did Tony? Yeah, man. Um, looking forward to tonight. We got some good stuff. Some G1 Transformers. I pick up another G1 collection. And uh, just really been fortunate to get some good stuff in. I'm just sorting some of the parts right now, as you can see. All the little, the money pieces, right? <laughs> all the parts are crazy. Um, crazy to get a hold of. And I got a few Motu, I got Motu pieces as well. Some, some cool ones coming up your way. So stand by. If you like some Motu stuff, I got one really bad of the bone piece that I'm having tonight. It's kind of a grail uh, for a lot of people, especially with accessories. So um, uh, it should be fun to see that stuff. 
as always. Um, a few examples back here, if you can see, we have a ton of the, uh, this is just a small offering. Uh, I'm kind of going through these. These are all the combiners for G G1 Transformers, or the majority of, several of them, I should say. I'm just get all the weapons put together with them. These are ridiculously hard to get complete because each one of the, uh, of course, combiners means you would take each piece and combine them together. They all had individual weapons in, in addition to the weapons that made the combiner, obviously. So uh, lots of this stuff. Uh, we'll show a couple of those uh, tonight as well. So some cool G1 stuff. We also have some Mochi stuff that, uh, that, uh, that I haven't shown yet. Some Mochi classics, some Star Wars stuff as well. Uh, got some more Star Wars stuff coming in soon. So from grading and whatnot. So it's just a constant, uh, constant uh, revolution of products of all toy lines, right? But mainly it's Star Wars, Human, and Transformers. That's my three. I want to kind of focus on. And Thundercast lately too as well because I got a nice collection of those in. I still got quite a few of those as well. So, uh, and just cool stuff, man. I've got a ton, a ton of these mini comics from He-Man. And they're not cheap. I mean, I say not cheap for what they are, you know. 20 bucks a piece of some of these. But these were the comics that obviously came with, um, that came with your He-Man figures, right? So, um, for example. Uh, most people forgot about this. That these things came with comics, right? Like, in the back side of the, the figure, they had a comic book. And if you if you watch the toys that made us, they they that's how they kind of pitched it. Like, oh, we'll make a we'll give you a comic book and we'll have a TV show. And that's kind of how that came about, right? Which is super cool to have these in good shape because they're always torn up or cut up or something. Um, Power of Point and Dread that was one of my favorites as a kid because it came with a record and you follow along. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, man. That's was that three hundred fifty bucks or something like that. Yeah, they they really have. Um, you, think, you know, it's kind of weird that they, a lot of people were kind of, um, with the Hasbro Pulse deal, uh, or excuse me, the, um, the crowdfunding one, they're kind of weird with, um, with, um, uh, people kind of just, you know, just, uh, what we say, they have a, uh, kind of a difference of opinion, like, if you're going to release this stuff, release it in stores, but they're crowdfunding it, right? It's almost like, it's Hasbro and it's Star Wars, do you really need to crowdfund it? It probably would work well with stores. I mean, it's it's you know it's all it's all about money to them, and I understand. It's just kind of like I get it. a lot of people, a lot of places like Walmart wouldn't be able to really that price point of three hundred fifty bucks or whatever it's running would not be in their wheelhouse, right? So they have to kind of do that. So that's a problem with Walmart's and Targets. They're you know they don't have a lot of you know the more expensive stuff they don't really carry, so you have to order it or um, you know go to a secondary place or retailer or what have you. So that's probably why they're doing it, but it's still cool. I like the ideas. And they did the Jabba's Barge and they did a Marvel stuff as well. So that's pretty neat. I think that anything new is good, right? So nothing wrong with that. I'll put this over here. Yeah, because if it's the vintage collection, right? So they fit the three and three quarter figures. It's huge. It's like it's a good size compared to the scale of the Mandalorian. Um, you know, it's good that they're making stuff for the Mandalorian, man. It's just, you know, that's, that's the hot, the hot hand right now. And it will continue to be as long as they continue to have good writers and good, good movies, right? Good, good excuse me, good, 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 uh, uh, good stories. The Sentinel, that was an expensive one too. That was a, that was a, that was a pricey one. It's super hot. Yeah. Like Mando stuff, you know, I mean, that's, I mean, it's pretty obvious. I mean, you can, even the newer, the older Mando stuff that's that's plentiful, you can't go into stores and buy it. It's all gone. You know, I mean, even the stuff that that's the easier to find, you know, or easier, not as expensive, what have you, is still sold out. Mandalorian stuff is just cool. I mean, it's just what's popular, and uh, rightfully so. They did a good job. Uh, I've always said this: maintain these last three movies. The Mandalorian to me trumped them all with a TV show. <laughs> as far as you know, I want to put this originality and difference you know they were kind of riding on the coattails of another story you know what i mean that was kind of been rehashed so good for them <laughs> what did he say i love vehicles too they need to make more vehicles like did a sunday man i wake up every day at like 6 30 or 7 i just i'm doing stuff or you know boxing stuff up or whatever it may be i'm up early i wake up all i very rarely will sleep in past seven o'clock i mean i mean i should say seven to eight you know something like that i don't sleep in and i go to bed you know midnight one two whatever i probably get five hours of sleep at night if i'm lucky 
Mando, best Star Wars in Return of the Jedi. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. A lot of people have said that, you know. Um, yeah, although what's funny is I've had a new appreciation for the for the prequels. I mean, I you know, because of the, uh, the kind of last three movies, the prequels, you know, are kind of, you know, not too bad. I mean, I thought they were kind of the end of the line, but then the, the new ones came out. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Uh, having said that, I have seen those multiple times, too. Scott, you missed it. We're done, dude. We're, I'm out. I'm sorry. You missed everything, man. You missed everything. Dogs won't let me sleep in that late. We're done. I mean, we, we sold Vinyl Cape Jawas and 21 back Boba Fett's and all that stuff. I mean, like literally 20 minutes ago. I mean, just sold it really fast. Sorry. Uh, yeah, the Clone Wars. Um... You know, that's one thing I never never really got into watching, and I probably should, because I watched a few of the cartoon movies, The Clone Wars. Son of a... Uh, I just... It kind of escaped. There was a window there that kind of like... I kind of was outside the Star Wars world for a while, just for whatever reason. But uh, I should watch it. I just haven't had the time. Watching that stuff, you know, getting invested time-wise, it's like going down a rabbit hole, and I'm like, son of a bitch. And then it's like the other things, responsibilities get pushed aside, like, you know, mowing the lawn and all these fun things you do, you know? Uh, <laughs> I guess I could hire somebody, but I just, whatever. Um, oh, yeah, that's cool. The, the uh, Jar Jar, right? Yeah, I saw that one come up as well. Yeah, kind of funny that they, they threw him out there. Good, good though. They're, they're, they're trying to pick from every line, you know, here and there, the original trilogy, the prequels, and, of course, the, uh, the newer ones, uh, the, latest, the latest trilogy, if you will. Yeah, Scott. Sorry, man. Sorry about that. I mean, snooze, you lose. Gone. That bird is flown. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, anyways. Um, uh, but yeah, cool stuff coming out from Hasbro. That was neat. Uh, I saw a bunch of that stuff, which is fun. You know, always anything new, different is is always good, right? It has to always be something new. How many how many ways can we make a Luke Farm Boy or Darth Vader? You know, it's just like okay. <laughs> I mean, it's still good. It's just like quit trying to like you know beat a dead horse. You know, we we got the point. You know, um, interesting stuff here. Some cool stuff that uh, I don't think I've ever shown before. I had this in storage for a long time. I may have shown these. I don't remember. It's been a while. These are super cool. These are some of my personal items. A lot of these things are personal items. Um, this is a cool piece because this came um, from the original Friday 13th, part of the dock that was rotting away from the original movie. So years down the line, when um, it was falling apart, basically, they cut out sections of it and sold it off, what was remaining. So this is part of the original dock from uh, the original Friday 13th, which was uh, in New Jersey or somewhere up there. I forgot. Camp. There's a, you can go take tours of it now of Camp Blood or whatever it's called. You know, they, they commercialized it. But this was a part of the original dock from Fire 13, which is pretty cool that somebody applied these patches later. I've got the COA somewhere else. I forget where it's at. But you can tell it's a pretty cool piece. And, you know, I like horror movies to a certain extent. And um, this is pretty neat. Kind of a cool, interesting item. I don't see that very often or stuff like that. I wouldn't a prop, but it was still, you know, in the movie. You know, call it what you will, a fixture. Uh, Need a new shed. How we just how we just stop right? Rogue One and Mando best original. Yeah, that's good. I, I can agree with that. I like. Yeah, I think Solo was good too for what it was. Acting was you know decent, but it was it was. I, I like Solo. It was watchable. Also another cool piece. This this was a, a prop from the prop uh, purchases from the prop store years ago. Also one of my favorite TV shows on Netflix was Narcos. You know what Narcos was? It was about the first. They, they, they've made several shows since, but the original was about uh, the DA and, and Pablo Escobar and the whole thing about you know the, the cocaine trade back in the 80s, right? Late 70s, early 80s, which was a huge deal, right? Probably, you know, it was ridiculous. So this was a, a, a he hero, if you will. That's what they call it. You know, when it's the hero, like the, the main one, worn instead of handcuffs by by uh, by uh, Steve Murphy, who was played by Boyd. Holbrook, 
Steve Murphy was a de-agent in real life, but you know, this guy actually played him. So this is actually from the movie, which I thought was cool, right? You know, something different. And, you know, I, I really liked that show, Narcos. It was just really gripping and captivating just because of the, the drama that was involved in it. And it was interesting. So just going over a few of these things right there. Let's see what I just can't watch any of the new Star Wars trilogy all the way through. Hopefully they wipe it out like the rumors are saying. Don't think that's going to happen. Uh, yeah, Tony, yeah. Uh, it's cool. I like stuff like that. You know, I try to get things that I really enjoy, um, you know, here and there. Um, I still need to unpack some things. I've got some over here. These are some of my cool pieces too, man. Um, that, you know, you know, I mean, it's one of those things where I buy stuff that I like. And I, if it's expensive, I don't care. If it's not expensive, I don't care. It's just really, you know, it's just kind of a taste thing. Uh, big fan of movies, obviously, and I love the movie Rad. You guys seen Rad? Remember Rad, which re re uh, recently came out in 4K. Uh, so Rad's a BMX movie from the 80s. Didn't they pack Power of the Force with with, cu with cuttings from the, the? Those weren't. I don't think those were just could be, but the, the little freeze frame films. I don't know if they were used. You know, like in the, they could have been used in theaters, but that's not a big deal because they made millions of miles of that stuff. Uh, but could be. Narcos was cool, yeah. Um, these are some autograph stuff that I like. Um, first off, the movie Rad, like I was telling you, this was from a. Uh, uh, one second, let me figure something out fast. Uh, from Bill Allen, right? Bill Allen was the original uh, dude who played uh, Crew Crew Jones, right? Got a little autograph from him right there, which is super cool. To Seth, get rad. Because I was into that BMX scene and all the skateboarding and gleaming the cube and, and all that stuff. It was a really cool. Uh, yeah, I don't think they were prints either. I mean, regardless. Um, but they were cool stills, you know. Um, anyway, so there's that one from um, another picture that I really like because uh, one of my favorite actors. And I. A big deal actors, obviously, not just the more popular character, but obviously the, the, the actors I really liked in the films. So this was taken, um, uh, I should say, this, this photo was signed by DeForest Kelly, who played Bones. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a barber. Best wishes. Not, this was not signed to me, obviously, or not, I picked this up later on. But my point is, this is a super cool, uh, I really like DeForest Kelly, he was a great actor in... Um, all the Star Trek stuff from the original series TV show onward to all the movies you can see right there uh, probably this is probably in the based upon his appearance probably this is probably taken um, it says 1988 so this would have been uh, episode 3 or 4 I should say episode 3 or 4 that would be uh, Search for Spock Voyage Home in that realm probably based on his outfit and based on just his his, his appearance end of the day which is pretty cool right DeForest Kelly always cool to have that and then last but not least, we have, um, I need to get this frame because I've had this forever. Uh, probably my favorite autograph that I've got. I've got a few more, some are lingering around. That, that one is a still from the Wrath of Khan, but I think being the date of this was 88, the Wrath of Khan came out much earlier. That's why I said that um, this um, was probably signed later on, but the still was, you know, obviously old. This does look like the Wrath of Khan, the Wrath of Khan. This is when they were in the... Uh, they were talking in uh, in Kirk's quarters, I believe, maybe, or his, uh, something like that. I forgot, but there it is. Yeah. Um, cool, cool photo, though. And um, uh, this is my favorite one, which I need to get framed, which, you, of course, you have uh, Alex Guinness with a photo there. It needs to get framed like this. And uh, this was from, oddly enough, Sister Alex Guinness on the back, and then it was signed in 2000, which was the year of his death. You know, or the year before his death or prior around that time. I think he died in 2001. Let me double check. Um, uh, I think he died. Alec Guinness died in 2000. So this would have been the year of his death, which is kind of interesting because he probably wasn't signing a whole lot of stuff prior. So he died in the latter part of the year, I think in August. All right, let me make, make sure. Um... He died, I think, let me see if that's correct, August. Yeah, August 5th. Um, he lived a long life. He was born in 1914. Wow, that's old. Uh, so he lived, what, six, 76 years? I mean, by today's standards, not very old. But I think he died, I think he was a heavy smoker. A lot of those actors were back then, or just because, you know, he probably had some... Um, uh, 
prostate cancer, excuse me, liver cancer before you, okay, liver, okay, okay, there you have it, uh, prostate and liver problems, so, you know, still 76 years old, pretty cool photo and autograph right there, um, Alec Guinness, you know, one of my, probably the dude, in my opinion, who made that movie work, uh, you know, without him, he's a kind of anchor character, yeah, I mean, you know, Harrison Ford was good, but he's still young and green, but, and so was, you know, Carrie Fisher and Mark were good too, but without him, mm, May not work really well. So I think he was one of the better adaptations. Him and James Earl Jones, James Earl Jones of voice really kind of made that uh, stick pretty well. Okay. So. And let's see. And, 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 and. <laughs> uh, yeah. There you go. Just some interesting stuff right there. A little show and tell. And I've uh, unpacked still a lot of my stuff that I've got hanging around. I mean, I've got G1 Transformers everywhere, some more Star Wars stuff, lots of Star Wars stuff just scattered about. And you know, I kind of switch back and forth. Uh, no, no, man. You know, not for a little bit. I mean, I, probably, I may do another auction thing one of these days. I enjoy those, but it's just, it's like they're, they're very time consuming. Right, because you know, with our current format, it's like, you know, so done one minute over. Auctions take longer, and then on the back end of it, it's you know, to make an auction make it make sense, you have quite a few items, right? And so, I mean, obviously, we'll do another one, but they'll be you know, spread out probably once or a few months, maybe do one for Christmas. Uh, it just the back end of that takes a lot of shipping. A lot of time and and stuff like that when you're doing that many items and just me basically me my wife helps shipping every once in a while you know with us so um it just takes a lot of time you can imagine if we do 30 you know 100 items a month it's still a lot to, lot to we do way, way more than that but my point is 200 items a month it's still a lot of shipping and stuff so that's why i really try to focus it on select items because I mean, I can sit up here and sell Power of the Force 2 stuff all day long, one at a time, or whatever it is. And that's fine. It's just that um, for time constraints, and then, you know, <laughs> I evaluate my time more than boxing up a $5 Power of the Force figure, which is wrong with that. But it's just like, I'm trying to really focus in on some, some select items. And I do sell that stuff too on occasion. When I've got, still got a ton of that stuff. I'm going to lot it out eventually and just, you know, move it along. Which is, you know, it's still cool. It's popular, very popular still. Um, so never had a problem messing with that stuff. So auctions, yes, we'll do more in the future. It's just, um, I don't know, just just takes a little more time. So we'll, we'll do another one. They're fun. I, I enjoy seeing that stuff too. I'll do another one. But uh, y'all have a sale tonight, like I said. We'll have some Star Wars, some He-Man, some Motu, some vintage Motu, some, um, some G1 Transformers, and some Star Wars stuff as well. I'll try to do some, some more artwork stuff. I've got some art, more artwork stuff that I've got, some already framed artwork or uh, you know limited edition stuff uh, from artists and whatnot. You know, some licensed, some not, but still cool either way, which is you know not any crazy expensive stuff, but stuff that's cool in walls because I find that when people already get, are done collecting or they don't want to collect any more stuff, you, they want to have some wall art because I like wall stuff too. It doesn't take much space usually. Once you have a frame, you're done. You can just stick it up there on a nail and... I need to put some stuff right here, actually. Uh, come think of it. Um, found some more of these. I've got a few of these, and I actually collect these things. These are super cool. Uh, and they're hard, and they're actually more expensive than you would think. Uh, catalogs, Christmas catalogs, are highly popular. If you ever see these things, man, at garage sales, which, the problem, as we all know with garage sales, uh, and with few exceptions, the garage sales have really not really become garage sales anymore. They, what they've really become is stuff that nobody wants and uh, they you know will obviously sell everything they want online which is fine it's just if you ever run across these at garage sales pick them up in any shape man these old um catalogs sell for good money uh uh of course you get all your star wars stuff i just which happened to be i pulled right to it see remember i remember ordering these things from catalogs you know i mean this was fun this was like the internet back in the day right Oh, mommy, my mommy, I want, I want this. Mommy writes, you know, copies down. J14. Look at the slave one. It's only, 
uh, sixteen ninety nine with a slate with a slate one cost from J C Penney back in the day, right? Super cool. This is uh, this is from eighty one, so this is the Empire era, obviously. Um, you know what, Lyle? I may have some more Raider stuff laying around. It's uh, I do have some more micro stuff. It's wow. Mm -hmm. I still have stuff in storage, man. I, I, I don't have enough. See, my, here's my biggest problem. I don't have enough room uh, to house all this stuff. I've got a store full of stuff that there's no way it can fit in, in a single room. So therefore, I've got to keep going back and forth and back and forth and just grabbing what I can for that week, right? It just, I just, I'm not going to fill a whole room up full of, full of bins and be like this. I just can't do it. I would drive myself insane. It just won't happen. But so it's kind of the luck of the draw on that. If I find something that I'm going through, great. If I don't, I'll just keep on going until I find something in the week's coming. Uh, oh, I need the 1984 Sears Wish Book because it's the one that sold my eight pack. Oh, cool, man. Oh, man. These were cool. I'm telling you, my grandmother would pull these out and she'd be like, I mean, look at this. Even <laughs> it's like, this is funny. Even the looking back at some of the the attire back in the early eighties, uh, look at the uh, the kids. Is that, is that the village people as kids? I mean, <laughs> look at look at that. You got the sailor, the marine guy, uh, the army guy, the cowboy, the elect, uh, elect, uh, high line worker. Then on the other side, you got all your doctor stuff, right? These are cool. Are these costumes, this Halloween stuff. Yeah, I guess this was Halloween stuff. But my point is that it's 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 cool, right? It's like a time capsule and. If you ever see these out and about in in the uh, in, in you know in for, you know sometimes you'll get lucky, but many times people have caught on to this because on eBay they sell for like fifty bucks and you know, you're getting into you know you know not people are not going to throw that stuff away obviously if they know it's fifty dollars, uh, but you know a lot of people did throw these away because once you use them for one time, what good was the catalog three years later? It's all updated, right? But this was super cool, and just seeing some of the I'm flipping through some of the the stuff here. Just seeing like the BMX bikes, right? Look at that, super cool, man. I love this stuff because it really takes me back to when I could remember some of this stuff being sold. Uh, what's that? Some sleds in here, all kinds of watches, Viewmasters. I mean, it's just, this was where I remember I get turned to toy section every time. Oh, this is super cool, a Tyco Night Glow racing kit, you know? Anyway, that's some kind of fun stuff. And uh, I get a hold of every once in a while. Uh, what's it say? A lot of, okay, uh, the worst was getting hyped up in the stores not having it. Yeah, because you would see it in the catalog and like, why isn't it in the store? You know, wh where's it at? We had to order it, right? But, hell, yeah, it worked. Ah, uh, diecast mailers, yeah. Um, I mean, you can, the Sears, well, they made Sears, J.C. Penney, and I think they did Montgomery Awards. It was the three catalog mailer or catalogs that came out there was some in canada as well that came out i forgot there was the company that did some mailers out there as well for star wars i'm talking about i did mail or catalogs uh but that was a those are fun man they're uh they're, they're always always cool to to see that stuff uh but uh, yeah man i'm always looking for this stuff because i just think it's fun it's just fun to flip through this and see you know what was technology back then? The alarm clocks, you know. I mean, that was you know that was a big deal. I mean, you got that on your damn phone now. I mean, it's just the technology has, has gone so far now that we're it's you know even what I'm doing now would be considered like Back to the Future stuff. Like, holy shit! Like, no, you're talking on you know it would not happen unless you had a satellite uplink or something, which was probably a billion dollars back then for all. Mail order guitars, right? <laughs> I mean, that was a big deal for people that didn't want to spend a lot of money, uh, you know, on your you know brand brand name guitars. Which you know, for those that don't know, I always play 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 guitars and stuff. So um, that's another whole other <laughs> other other story. But um, you know, this was a where you could go get a guitar for fifty bucks, right? I mean, you can't buy a guitar for fifty bucks these days, even a piece of POS one. You know, I mean, I say that lightly because they're all instruments, but um, you know they're. You know, not as you know, uh, not as uh, uh, well made. Let's put it that way. Uh, more Star Wars stuff. You know, um, let's see. Just scoping through here. Do the Christmas catalog. Man, there's some cool stuff in these things. Matchbox, Tyco. Uh, at, uh, remember the uh, oh the Lego sets, man. Lego. 
you know, back then, Lego was kind of not like it was now, right? Really, Star, and Star Wars really saved Lego from going under. And when Star Wars, when they got the license for Star Wars, it went, phew, it went way back up because Lego was in trouble, big time. And Star Wars helped them out. Um, I should say, uh, they helped each other out, I guess, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. But Lego was not what it was. To, it definitely was not a collector thing like it is today. Legos are, you know, collect, people collect them and, you know, you know, they put them on their wall, still sealed on it, which is awesome and cool, but it, it wasn't like that back then. They just opened them and played with them, you know. Uh, Montgomery Ward, Siegel, JC, yeah, we're at uh, Chicago, yep, yeah, mm-hmm. Montgomery Ward. I mean, Ward's was one of my stores I always went into. And not so much Sears. It was either Ward's, uh, Ward's and Pennies. I caught my grandma used to call it pennies, JC Penny. Um, but we used to go there quite a bit. Uh, Grammy Awards is always a, a cool place to go to. Uh, even skateboard decks, that's super rad, right? Lone Ranger, Captain America, and Popeye down there. <laughs> uh, this is cool, man. I haven't really dove into this one. I just remember I found one of these the other day and I was like, let's just take a gander. And of course, all dolls, chainsaws, drills, all these things, you, they didn't have Home Depot, right? So, I mean, Sears had this stuff, you know, uh, but, you know, you wanted a chainsaw, order one for your catalog, you know? I mean, a lot of places didn't have the ability to go down the store and buy this stuff. And of course, <laughs> the lingerie section, right? Classy 80s lingerie. <laughs> right uh, uh, or night attire then you get into the robes you know you know that was a big thing back in the day man remember uh, like bathrobes you know I mean I'm sure some people still wear them I don't particularly not that it matters but matching bathrobes were a big thing you know that was a huge deal back in the day you know to have your <laughs> So, if you have a point is you're find these for a good price or whatever, or just find them out, especially for a couple bucks, whatever. Pick one up. You will be you will be amazed at how much time you can spend looking through one of these, and just especially if you're you know from this era, you'll remember what they were, and just kind of like man, it's like a, it's just like walking the blast of the past. Camcorders, ridiculously expensive. Let's see how much this camcorder was. Um, holy crap, this camcorder. Let's see. Portable VCR. So, because you okay, remember back in the day with camcorders, like, so it was different than today, right? So, you had your, your, your device, right? Your camcorder. And the only way you could play it back was through VCR. So, some of them had the actual VHS tapes that you could put in there, huge, right? You drop in there and, and you hit record, then you can put them in your VCR. Most of them had a mini cassette and they had a converter. So the converter is what you put in the VCR with a mini cassette that went inside it and then shut the, shut the thing down and went in there. Still, uh, you know, almost $2,000 for, for, for one of these, the mini camcorders, which back in 81, if you factor in inflation, I mean, that was probably like four grand or something. Let's actually see what that would have cost in uh, $81. Um, uh, Let's see. Uh, inflation calculator. That's what we need. Let's just try this. I'm, I'm interested. There we go. Okay. So in 1981, if something cost like 1,900 bucks, right? Okay. Wow. So this camcorder that it was talking about was like $1,900 is what it would cost. In 81, today's money, that item would cost $5,400. That's a 185% rate of inflation. That's ridiculous, right? It's just like, that's a you know, $5,000 camera. But if you buy a $5,000 camera today, you're talking a pretty kind of beyond consumer level camera, right? I mean, that's not something you're going to just go buy for your family usually. That's, you know, you can go pick one up for 500 bucks or what have you. Um, like this camera I have on, on here is a is a borderline commercial camera. It was not cheap either, but because uh, of the functionality. But the point is that five thousand dollars, man, that's that's expensive camera these days. So think about that back in the day. Two thousand dollars was a shit ton. Probably probably was a shit ton of a uh, lot of money back then, and it's still a shit ton of money. Then even wrong. Uh, what's up, Roman? Hope you're doing well. Uh, you missed uh, some fun out Kirby's a couple weeks ago. 
Uh, you get, uh, you know, then you get into video games like the Atari systems. Man, this is cool, right? So just, you know, I always like this stuff. Anyway, going over the Penny catalog for you. Like I'm, is Daisy Penny still even? Uh, yeah, they're still, they're barely hanging on, probably, like Dillard's. They made all their money years ago, and now they're just probably going to close up shop. It is what it is. The internet's killing everybody. Need to. It's fun, man. It was a good time. Got some, got some food and campfire. All that fun. Made some good steaks. It was good weather. Hope it gets cold and starts snowing lately. You gonna watch the chefs today, Roman, or the Chiefs? I don't, don't they play the uh, Ravens? That's like two of the best teams in the country, right? The NFL. I kind of haven't watched the NFL in several years, but I just know they were playing. I know Dallas is playing somebody too. I think the Seahawks or something like that. I don't. We don't watch the NFL that much anymore. Never have to begin with. Just hard to be loyal to teams when all the players leave so much. Uh, watched some college ball yesterday. So yeah. Oh, tomorrow night. Okay. Gotcha. Tomorrow. That's, oh yeah, that's a big game. But yeah, so yeah, tonight at sale, I've got vintage Motu, some really cool pieces. I've got some vintage G1, some G1 Transformers. I've got some of those. Got some Star Wars stuff. Um, this just some really cool stuff that I picked up recently, right? You know, some interesting stuff. And uh, as always, you never know. And then uh, get anything shipped out tomorrow. That's it. That's it for me. Well, I hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy it. We'll see you tonight at 7 p.m. Central. I skipped football yesterday. Went to see Empire Strikes Back. That's right. Empire Strikes Back was on yesterday. And, and Friday as well for the 40th anniversary or for the, the release there. Hope you guys have a good one. We'll see you tonight at 7 p.m. Central. Have a good sale. Get some stuff lined up for you guys. Until then, make it a good one. We'll see you then. Adios. There we go. <laughs> Galaxy Toy Store. Hope you guys are doing well. Heading into Monday, Sunday night fiasco, like we always do every Sunday right here. Or get a pretty high percentage on Sundays. It depends on what day it is, but usually it's uh, every two, uh, every Thursday and Sunday. We sprinkle in Tuesdays here and there. So stay with us. Keep up to date. Make sure you subscribe to us on Facebook and YouTube for all, for all of our uh, updates. I don't know how many times people are like, hey, are we having a sale tonight? And, you know, it's not happening or it's happening or they miss out something because we throw a, a surprise sale in there because you know hey it happens right we get stuff in we just sell it that's how we do it and then obviously we have our mainstays thursday and tuesday and things like and thursday and sunday at 7 p.m then we add in other days as well let's see who's in the chat room let's get things going here shortly what's up 
Uh, good Aussie band. There you go. <laughs> yeah, man, they're good. What's up, Tony? What's up, Don Barber? We got some cool stuff tonight, man. We have got some. Uh, and just so for those that you know uh, from uh, Thursday, everything's boxed up and ready to go uh, for tomorrow. But, you know, I should say their boxes are open. So if you add anything to it, everything we have is small tonight in size. So it shouldn't really affect the shipping much. So we'll just combine it or whatever. If it's a big deal, we'll, it, you know, we don't overcharge for shipping, stuff like that. But if it does happen to be a little bit more, you know, whatever. But my point is it's still cheaper than make multiple shipments, right? There you have it. What's up, John Wall? What's up, guys? Jeremy Sleesman's in there. Tony Johnson, Don Barber. Uh, Nita's 1979 Toy Blast from Han Solo, says Corey Gal Galal. Uh, how about the, the DL44? I don't know if I've got my weapons. I haven't, I haven't looked at my weapons lately. I, I'm kind of all over the place with the weapons. Um, just contact the store if you would uh, off on the Facebook Facebook Facebook, Facebook message er, and let us know what you have. Uh, excuse me, let us know uh, what you're looking for, and I'll see if I can round one up. Simple as that. I just we have so much stuff, probably likely in the you know five to ten thousand items range. It's just all over the place. So finding some of those things sometimes can be kind of a bit tedious. But having said that, I will you know, do my best. Big toy that works. Okay. Oh, the big one. Okay, you mean the the gun, the actual uh, the scale replica, if you will, for back then. The, the uh, don't have that. Uh, have had many, uh, but uh, like I said, always check back. We're getting those in loose, complete. Uh, you know, in boxes depends on the day. So, speaking of everything, what's up, John? Like I said, we've got a lot of cool stuff tonight. We've got some G1 Transformers. Quite a few of those, right? We have got some Motu, vintage Motu stuff. That's our two big ones. Now we've got a few Star Wars items as well. Uh, you know, we really use, are really heavy on Star Wars, but, you know, when we get other items in, we have to just kind of switch gears and sell that, sell that stuff, right? Because we, uh, you know, a lot of our stuff's being graded right now uh, with CES. So, you know, we're just kind of a holding pattern for some of our vintage Star Wars stuff, among other, uh, uh, some modern stuff as well we have seen graded. Oh, what's up, Anthony W? So, we got some cool stuff, like I said tonight. Uh, G1 Transformers and Motu, vintage Motu especially, and a couple big items. Uh, one really big Motu item, which is super cool, really hard to get a hold of. And if you know about Motu stuff, this one's a kind of a showstopper, if you will. Okay, what else do we have? Um, a few other things here, and we've got some closeouts as well that we're going to be getting out of here. Uh, let's see. Some Thundercats, a couple Thundercat pieces. Uh, a little bit of everything. So here's how the sale works for the, uh, for the uninitiated. We put an item out there, the post note. There's two numbers on that note. There is a, the bottom low, the bottom, the lower bottom number is the PG number. The large number is the price. So an example, if you'd like to commit to buy uh, an item, this is how you're going to do that. PG number space price. So an example of that is PG zero space 19. So the PG number was zero and the price was 19, right? Space and night. Yeah, here we go. Um, so that's how that works. So after the sale, contact us on Facebook. Let us know. Say, hey, I had this, 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 this. We'll get you shipping, shipping calculated and sent out. Uh, obviously, if you have items from um, Thursday night, I said those are boxed and ready to go for tomorrow. We'll just add that to your shipment. If it make, it'll probably make a difference on shipping. If it does, whatever. If it doesn't, you know, we won't charge you for it, obviously. So there's that. Um, but if you uh, obviously getting something for the first time or not from something uh, from Thursday, it will just be a standard shipping. Minimum shipping is $5.99. Anything above that, we calculate by weight distance and all the, the measurements the post office gives us. And that is my spiel for tonight. I hate talking so much like that. But let's get things going. We got a little bit of everything. Let's see what we got started off tonight. We got some vintage Motu. And so we got lots of G1 Transformers and some really nice ones. And they're 100% complete and they're exceptional condition. Uh, you know, if you guys know, we usually look out, we really try to focus in on the really nice stuff. Uh, and I say nice is that's being condition wise nice. It's not that anything is, else is not nice, but uh, it just helps us out. It's easier to sell when it's complete and things like that. Uh, although we do on occasion have some loose and complete things depending on what they are. So there you go. Let's get things started tonight. We have got a nice piece right here. Starting us off with some vintage Motu. And this will take you back to your childhood, your lunchbox days. You're, uh, you know, if you had a lunchbox, I don't know, maybe you had a brown paper bag. Maybe but you likely saw this. Here it is, vintage Masters of the Universe. This is the lunchbox, of course. Now, distinguishing between a lunchbox collecting, it's always the metal ones are always the more sought after, right? The plastic ones are kind of, eh, they're, they're still cool. It's just the metal ones always command more. And the big thing about uh, the the uh, the, po the uh, lunchbox is that they're all rusted out. This was, was an, an 
above average condition has a little bit of surface rust i don't know if you can see it right there but overall the graphics are very strong here where you want to see them in the, in the front and the side no thermos unfortunately but the price would indicate that but it does have the spots it's nice and clean nice and white right so you could pick up a thermos for you know 10 or 15 bucks something like that but i mean obviously if i had it i'd throw it in there but on the side you can see some more graphics overall the the the, the bunch box is in good good condition a little bit of writing here if you can see it's been faded i don't know if you can even see that it's just i mean minor but other than that you got you know all your main characters there in tila and so forth and of course gray skull with the characters in the background well thank you lewis i appreciate the compliment so this one is pg number 10 and this is the lunchbox you know no dents i'm just going to go over the condition of these things look at that nice strong graphics pg number 10 is 29 dollars for the He-Man or the Motu lunchbox. Cool piece, right? K kicking things off with some old school. And I like the different stuff too. I love the toys, but we have we get this stuff in on occasion. And it's a cool piece. PG-10 is $29. Good state. You can hear the, I'll play the drums on there if you wanted to. There you have it. Nice strong graphics, like I said. Masters of the Universe on the side as well. What's up, Bro Coley from Walmart War, uh, War Machine Merch? <laughs> there you go. Super cool, man. Uh, well, uh, Ro over there does some really cool custom stuff. So go check them out at War Machine, uh, uh, WarMachineMerch.com or whatever the website is. I forget, but it's, it's cool stuff. You got some cool stuff going on there. There it is. Uh, some more stuff. PG1029, Gino Bazzi. Good to see you, Gino. That's a cool piece. Kicking things off. And you got to love the Motu stuff. And I got some vintage Motu as well. A couple. One big piece, and it's a nice one. Not for everybody because it's expensive, but it's the nicest one I've ever had, which, you know, it's not saying a whole lot, but it's saying enough, right? I see a lot of stuff. Okay. Okay, moving on. What we got next? We are going to do something different. Let me check something real quick. Uh, let me check my... Here we go. That's what I needed right there. Okay. This, we have got some G1 Transformers and quite a few of them. Uh, got another nice collection of G1s. I mean, I've got a lot of G1s, you know, all over the place. Most of them are complete. Some of them aren't, but all these tonight are complete because I like to sell complete stuff and I try to complete them down the road. It smells like the 80s. It does. Okay, let's see what we're we gonna kick off with. We're gonna do G1 Transformers. Let's start kind of light. Let's do this. Uh, this is super cool and a bargain for this piece. Now, this is actually, this piece is the only incomplete G1 we have out of all of them. And most of you guys know, probably know why. It's a really tough one to get complete. And, I, and this one just, the good thing about this one, it has no parts, no accessories, so it's a blank canvas. Do what you want with it. It's an overall good condition. This is a G1 Jetfire, right? So obviously, Jetfire has a lot of parts. I mean, you know, gun clips and, and all the other stuff that goes with them. I don't have all the pieces. I don't have any pieces, to be honest with you, on this piece. But uh, the good thing about this Jetfire, it's missing everything from that standpoint, right? Missing the chest plate and, and, all, the wep and all the weapons, what have you. But the good thing about this one is it's a good blank canvas to start with. If you want Want to build them up with a new chest plate and so forth uh you got the cogs and these the cogs right here are the little plastic things that go in the joints and they're always not working this one is you can hear that that's what you want to see if you're out and about that's a big deal because replacing those cogs is kind of a pain in the butt and um you know it's expensive you know time time consuming if you will so jet fire incomplete all the way around complete jet fires are 250 to 300 dollars exceptional ones even higher and with the box obviously you know twice as much but nice overall jet fire Eric said, missing everything except, you know, what, what you see right here. So he is, here you go, Jetfire, kicking things off. It's a good starter Jetfire for somebody or one for a kid that needs one or something. PG number 11 is $34. Uh, thank you, Robert. I appreciate that. Paging, paging, paging. Paging Mr. Leonard. Uh, Mr. Mr. Herman, Mr. Herman. PG number 11. Um, there you go. Um, and, oh, I, I should also note that um, Carl Nimsal. Carl, I can put this in your shipment, just pay the $34 and I'll get it out to you with, with your other items, okay? Thank you, Carl. So I should note that we are streaming, to, we are multicasting to two platforms, right? So you're not gonna see if you're on Facebook what, what, what somebody on YouTube puts in and vice versa. The only way you can do that is if you open up both windows, which you are, are welcome to do. We have a chat, um, uh, a chat program that consolidates everything to one deal. You can't see that obviously, but we can. So if you're not seeing something, that's the reason why. Somebody's like, oh, I don't see it. I'm like, well, tr trust me. I don't play favorites. The first person I see gets it. I don't. Everybody's money's good with me. I love everybody, so thank you. I do, it doesn't matter to me. I hope you guys get there first. There we go. Jetfire, uh, call them south. Thank you. Okay, okay. Okay, up next, what are we gonna do? Let's do, uh, let's do, this is a cool piece. We're starting off kind of light. Now, those of you that do not do or do, do or do not know, Walmart has exclusives out there that is a cross pollination, if you will, of 
WWE and He-Man. It's called the WWF or E Universe, right? And they take two figures and they mold them together. And this is what by far the most popular. It's sold out everywhere. You can't find them for months. It's the one that everybody wants, and rightfully so, because it's the Undertaker crossed with Scareglow. So check this out. It's unpunched, overall good shape card. Look at that. That's the one that's out, sold out everywhere. And we'll throw that here at a good price. You know, no major issues with them. Uh, just a decent card, unpunched. Obviously no tags because Walmart isn't tagging anything anymore. This is the one that everybody's looking for out of that entire line. It says the cross between Undertaker and, of course, uh, like I said, Scareglow. PG number six, a cool throat, man. A cool. They're doing some cool stuff lately. They're really going to the well and finding some interesting stuff and they're... They're, they're doing some good work. PG6 Space 29 takes home The Undertaker cross with Scareglow. And look on the back. If you're a wrestling fan, this is up, 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 up. Boom, boom, boom. You can see, up, uh, sorry. There it is. Look at uh, It's just really cool to see The Undertaker and Scareglow together. And that is like probably the toughest one that, that I know of to find right now. And there you have it. So Walmart exclusive. Can't find these anywhere. They're just sold out, man. That's a cool piece. And I love some old school WWF and some cross with some, uh, with some uh, 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 Motu. Cool stuff, man. They're doing some, I really like the fact they're doing some of this stuff. It's pretty neat. Okay. Moving along. Let's do some, uh, like I said, most stuff we have is vintage tonight, by the way. Uh, a few things are scattered in there. So just, just uh, you know, I throw some stuff in there for everybody. Can't please everybody. Okay. Up next, let's do, let's do, just do, just do. Let's do, hmm, oh, this is super cool. PG number 12, PG number 12. And a little, 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 side, little side note on this one. Uh, this, you may see this, this is not a big deal, like size-wise, or, but this, out of, they made four different versions of this piece I'm about to show you, or four different, four total in the collection. And this one is by far the toughest one to get, and I know that because I, First of all, they're expensive online, and B, I say expensive what they are, and B, uh, the, the guy who I bought this collection from told me, he's like, this is the hardest one to get out of all of them. The other ones are easy. So here it is. This is a vintage Motu. This, of course, is the uh, Battle Cat. This is from the stamp. So they only made four of these. The other ones are very easy to get a hold of. Um, this is the hardest one. So the, you get Orko, Battle Cat, uh, Skeletor, and, and He-Man. That's your four characters. And this is, of course, still on the card. Excuse me, unopened. Overall, good shape. A little curled a car right there, but I'm saying. This one, he told me he paid like 50 bucks for it because he never find it. I'm going to throw it out there at like $15 cheaper than you can get it online. It's in between, anywhere between 40 and 50 bucks right now. PG12 for $29 for the uh, Motu stamps. That is the um, uh, Battle Cat. That's super cool, too. I just love the graphics. And there you have it. It's unpunched. PG6 for $29. Uh, Ro Coley had this uh, on this one right here. I just saw that. Sorry. Put that uh, the uh, th the uh, PG number six, which is the Undertaker one. There you have it. So there we go. PG twelve is twenty nine dollars. That is bad to the bone. It's the hardest one to get out of all of them. Uh, Brandon, if you're the only one I see that wants this, so I'm gonna go ahead and assume that's. I waited like five minutes. I'll give this to you. Um, I'll give this to you, Brandon Pollard. Bubba Paul. Bubba. <laughs> Good to see, good to see you in there, man. Good, good, good. I get you right there. You know, usually, uh, it needs to be a proper, but I, he's the only one that was out there, so it's obvious that he wanted that. So it's no big deal. Kind of, you know, I make the rules. I can break the rules. Just kidding. But seriously, yes. Um, there you have it. Um, what's up next? Let's do some more G ones, man. I got some cool ones too, man. Okay, let's kick things off with this one. This is the cheapest G one complete that I've got tonight. And this one is by the name of, uh, what is his name anyway? Oh, Slugfest. And this one's awesome because I love all the cassettes, right? And the cool thing about this one is 100% complete with the two weapons. And Slugfest is a cassette that opens up like this. Boom. And his feet go down. He's, a little He's like a, a Stegosaurus, right? I won't open all his legs, but there it is. Um, with these and all things that have these joints, I would implore you to be very, very, very gentle with them. Uh, these are old plastic, so I mean, just be gentle. As I say that I'm doing my doing that, I'm doing the damnedest myself because it's not that I want to I break them and it's a money loss thing. It's like I just don't want to break them because they're cool. Um, so this is a cool cassette, hundred percent complete. These cassettes, people always go crazy over the cassettes because they're always lost with the weapons, right? PG number two, four. Here we go. 
I follow the follow the the thingy. I'm supposed to know. PG number two is thirty four dollars for the uh, slug slug fest is his name. He's a uh, stegosaurus. That is super cool. Yeah, you can claim on there. You can claim wherever you want, man. You can claim wherever you want. You can claim on there, here, wherever you want to, Bubba. It's just Facebook's faster, but you or YouTube's faster, but do what you want, my man. PG2 for 34 bucks is Slugfest, 100% complete G1 Transformer with the cassette and has the two weapons right there. That is cool. And it's cheap for G1, right? G1s are never cheap, especially complete. It's all about the weapons. You can find the cassettes for 15, 20 bucks. You know, the weapons are always basically double the price, right? I mean, that's just kind of what it is. Slugfest, PG2 is 34 bucks. Cool, 100% complete. What is it, Robert? Throw it up again. Okay, I'm sorry. Did I mess something up? I apologize. I'm trying to keep it up. Okay, it wants that, no big deal. PG2 for $34. There it is, just helping you spend your money, he says. Oh, Robert's good at that, helping other people spend their money. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay, let's do, let's move on. Speaking of, let's change gears a little bit. I've got a bunch of G1s tonight and some really cool ones coming up. Let's change gears to some Thundercats. This is Tigra. They made two versions of him, the old one and the young one. This one, <laughs> this one is a gorgeous example of the young Tigra, 100% complete with his, I guess, nunchucks, whatever you want to call them, weapons, but there they are. And that just hurts my hands doing that. That should have been like a, a product safety problem, like a whip. Oof. Anyway, beautiful Tigra. This is the young version. They made an older version as well. And there he is. And he's just gorgeous. I mean, I don't see, I can't find a flaw on him. I mean, other maybe just a little overpaint, but good Lord, that's from the factory. And that's about it. There's Tigra, 100% complete, always missing the weapons on all of our, um, on all of the uh, Thundercats. PG-20, $69. This is like an $80 piece. I'm, what I actually try to do is mark it down like 10 bucks from, from what you'd expect to pay on eBay or whatever, if not more. So there you have it. PG-20 PG is $69. Gorgeous figure. This is the young version of Tiger. This is the only Thundercats we had tonight. Gino Bozzi, he's, he's going to get all my Thundercats, which is cool because I had a bunch of them. And just, I very rarely get Thundercats in. People hold on to them. They're just badass, and they're cool figures. Uh, Gino Bozzi takes that one. I got you on there, Gino. <laughs> Twice. You want two of them? I don't have two of them. Sorry. Um, okay, let's move along. Okay. Let's do something neat, and I like neat. Motu, vintage Motu. This is super cool. This is PG number 14, one four, one four. Now, this was placed, somebody took, the, took very good care of this piece because normally it was sold, uh, to, at least to my knowledge, um, probably outside of a, a packaging, like normal, just as you would touch it. And this, somebody put a sleeve back on, or it could be the original, I don't know. But it's exceptionally well taken care of. This is a frame trade puzzle. Look at this. Gorgeous, gorgeous graphics. Likely, I mean, usually you can tell if puzzles have been played with because they get worn out on the edges, right? I don't see anywhere on these edges. I don't think it's ever been taken out and like the puzzle's been taken out. This is awesome. You get Battle Armor He-Man right there with Orko on his shoulder, swinging through some vines, Merman down here. You got a uh, Skeletor back over here firing at him, and he's blocking it with that. Then, of course, um, just some really cool, of course, Motu up here. And then over here, you've got He-Man on the back. I have the power. This is a really good condition and not beat up. And this would be a good one to frame on your wall unless you wanted to play with it and you know take it out and put it back together, which, hey, do it. Frame tray puzzle. Tough to get a hold of, especially usually find them missing pieces, but they're really great graphics on this. PG number 14, and the sleeve is on here too, so somebody took really good care of it because so you, you can't even remove it. PG 14 is $49, uh, nice flat. I mean, this looks like new old stock, man. It's just in good shape. The artist's name is down there on the bottom where he signed it, you know, obviously. Uh, I should say, uh, you know, let, put his little mark on there. Super cool, PG 14, 49 bucks. What's up, uh, uh, <laughs> Robert Ortiz, man? I'll get this with your with your um, uh, your record too, Robert. So don't worry about the shipping. Just just pay this because it'll fit in there great. That's really cool. Hang that on your wall, man. That's awesome. Like I said, the the, the uh, material on here is badass. It's got this or this uh, cellophane or plastic. That's really cool. You'll like that. Cool stuff. And uh, man, I've just got some. And people always ask me. My number one question I get is funny. Is like people comment. They're always like. Same, glad you bought it and saved me some coin, he said. Well, there you go. But always ask me where I get stuff. And it's mostly you guys or other people that know you guys or like, you know, references and things like that. So I appreciate it. You know, I'm really selective about what we take in usually. Sometimes I've taken a lot of stuff I, you know, I didn't really want, but it is what it is. But uh, uh, so thank you. 
appreciate that, all you guys out there hooking me up because it hooks me up and hooks you guys up and everybody's happy and the world's beautiful and my bank account goes way down. So there you go. Uh, and then I just fill it back up and buy more toys. So it's, it's just always, you know, in flux. So there you have it. Okay. Let's move along. Let's do a G1 Transformer. Let's do this one. This one, if you know about G1s, Power Masters are expensive. Power Masters, so, or excuse me, I should say, Headmasters uh, are really expensive, slash Power Masters, both are actually expensive. This is, uh, this is a really cool one. I have to remember his name real fast. Yes. Great, awesome piece. This is Darkwing. They make Darkwing, Dreadwing, and a few others. But here's the thing about, just, just a little education, not, not to tell you guys don't know what you're talking about. When you're looking at, at these that have the, uh, the headmasters, you really have got to look um, for the actual headmaster. This piece is always missing. They're like 40 to 50 bucks. So he fits right in here and goes down and go, kind of rides within flush because you can see his little spring mechanism. 100% complete on this one. Let me show you the weapons. Uh, where are the weapons? Uh, I just had them. I guess, yeah, right here. I guess these are right here. Yeah, has to be. Here he goes. So here's the weapons for him. So, really super cool. And man, the wings move. Really looks like a, you know, like one of those tornado jets back in the day. Or you have, or even kind of like a Top Gun jet, right? It's got the, the, the wings that collapse. What's up, Tom? What's up, Tom? <laughs> What's up, man? These are super cool. In great condition. Decals been applied nicely. You can see that. They're not horrible. And got the total 80s, you know, mid to late 80s vibe. This is around 87, 88, I believe. Let's double check my, my, uh, I think this is 88. Double check my, it is 88. It's 87 or 88, something like that. Has that really cool uh, purple and gray. You know, they kind of went to that scheme and got away from all the, from all the, like, the oranges and what have you and went to that rad look. Well, there it is. And a tough one to get a hold of. This is easily a $150 piece any day of the week and sometimes $200. I'm going to discount it heavily because I just want to sell it and get it moved on. This is PG number 16, is 129, and you have this piece, which is always missing. And one thing about these, this is a bot, right? He turns into a little robot, and you pull his arm down. Be careful with these. If these break, it's like ridiculous. I mean, you can't replace them. You have to buy a new one. It sucks. But there it is. So you get 100% complete. PG number 16 is 129 for that piece. Really cool. This is, like I said, Darkwing. It's not Dreadwing. It's Darkwing. Let me double check that. Uh, I want to make sure I was. Yeah, Darkwing. That is awesome. And of course, his 100% uh, complete there. His uh, wings would go out like that. His rudder, rather, opens up like that as well. Super cool. Power Masters, Head Masters, all those are always tough to get a hold of. They're later in the line, but they're, just, they're kind of like the power of the force, right? It's just like that. You know, they're just expensive, and it would be a good, a good kind of analogy for Star Wars fans. There you have it. Really super cool piece right there. Darkwing from the G1 line. Okay, let's do over here. Let's move over here. Now this piece right here, back to Motu. I've got some Star Wars stuff coming up here in a minute. Not a whole lot, but I do have some, so stand by. I'll save some of you Star Wars boys some money tonight. <laughs> Just kidding, I've got a few things. Not a whole lot, but hey, why not? Just kind of switch gears a little bit, do something different. This is Super 7. Super 7, this one is the ultimate Skeletor, and one of the big keys with this one, first of all, it's a gorgeous piece, it comes with a box. There it is. You got the box right here, and this is how it was delivered to you. So there is the box, and the actual piece itself is gorgeous. Super uh, Super Seven Skeletor, gorgeous piece, right? There it is. Awesome. My wife just my wife just yelled. Thanks. <laughs> Hunter says, uh, wife is like, yes, we can get groceries. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just joking with you, Hunter. We can go buy some bedding or whatever, you know, whatever. You get, it's a give and take. You got, you got to learn to, to give a little bit. Anyway, this is anywhere at 150 to $200 as well, any day of the week. I think the last one was like 160. I'm just gonna get it out of here. PG5 for 129 for the Ultimate Scale Score Super 7 with the box. Gorgeous figure, pieces in good shape, no problems. Comes with the shipper as well, which is a big deal. Uh, for most people, it's like 20 bucks piece for these shippers. PG5, 129, Ultimate Skeletor, Super 7. Mo2 is red hot right now because of the uh, forthcoming movies and Netflix stuff coming out. So uh, if it's your thing, get it. There it is. PG5, 
<laughs> Might as well, Hunter. <laughs> Who needs food when you have so many wonderful? That's right. That's a good way of looking at it. You can, you can lose some weight, right? You, you don't have to. You can go. You can be malnourished, but you can have toys. Mm, that, that, don't. I'm gonna get sued for this. He told me not to eat and buy toys. Yeah, all of a sudden I'm gonna get some you know, lawsuit. PG5 for 129 is a super uh, ultimate Skeletor for 129. Like I said, easily 150, 200 bucks on a given day, and no too hot right now, so take advantage. Leading up to Christmas, I was gonna say this earlier. Leading up to Christmas. It, it just always happens every year, and I'm, I'm not saying this just, just to warn you, but just for the sake of it. Getting up to Christmas seems like you know prices start getting higher and higher because everybody has more money at Christmas. So a lot of these things will eventually probably go up a little bit because so just take advantage. I'm going to sell it if I can and get it out the door. Some of these do get more expensive as we go up, and not a big deal. That's just kind of the, the economic law of the land with, with anything leading up into the holidays. It just tends to get more expensive. But there you go. PG5, 129 for the Ultimate Skeletor Super 7. Well, PSA there for you. I let my family have a Swedish meatball once a month. We go to buy new display cabinet. <laughs> oh man, oh man. Uh, you know, I'm I'm really surprised over the years I've never gotten death threats and or uh, you know mad wives calling me. It just never happened. I'm I take it back. I've had a couple that have brought in that used to bring in stuff. They're like, you know what? You know, my my husband used to buy all this stuff from you, and and now you know, this that and the other, and they bring they're bringing the toys back to sell them to me. I'm like. He's really going to be pissed, but no, he wasn't. But still, my point is, regardless. Okay, let's move along, shall we? Um, let's do some G1. Okay, let's let's move this move, move down the road here. All right, we have got up next PG number nine. Uh, I forgot to look him up. No, I mean not the name. Okay, let's just do this. I want I want to make somebody a deal on this because I want to put these together. So we have. Let's see your fast. This one is uh, Cloud Breaker and Fast Lane. I just didn't know their names. Now I do. Cloud Breaker and Fast Lane. These are the clones, right? In the G1 line. So they're 100% complete, as you can see. Got the wings in the back, always broken off on the wings here. These are in gorgeous condition. So clones, meaning you can tell they're almost identical, right? But they have different weapons. And this one's a race car. This one's more of a an airplane, uh, a flying a flying bot, if you will. So these usually sell for about 50 bucks a piece. Let's gonna call this PG, this is for the set because I, I contemplated selling them loose, but I was like, yeah, let's put them together. Uh, let me see my, my thing here. PG number, uh, let's call this PG number 50. I'm gonna sell these together at a steal, getting them both 100% complete, knocking off 20 bucks off the price if you were to buy these individually. $79 for the pair. Uh, once again, Cloud Breaker, excuse me, it's a, um, Cloud Breaker and Fast Lane. So Fast Lane is here, Cloud Breaker is here. 100% complete. Both of these go together. The clones. If you got one, need the other one. Just just grab it if you need it. It's a cool. It's a cool selection. A cool pairing. So there you go. PG 5079. Cool pick. Gino, Gino Bazzi got those two. And these are in excellent condition, by the way. And like I said, if you get one, you have to almost hit the other because. So there you have it. Gino Bazzi. Put that in his stack over there. His stackaroo. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let's bump it up a little bit. Uh, let's see what we got to do here. Let's do let's do another one of these. Then we'll, then we'll, then we'll go we'll go a little bit out there. <laughs> to hell with the food. I have to go truck shopping. Whoa! Hope you get a good one. Uh, their trade-ins right now are really good all over the place because you know the car dealers can't go to the can't go not, cannot go to auction, so they're really hurting for uh, for inventory. So there you go. Okay, here we go. Up next. That's weird. Another, another, this is another, let's fix that later, never mind. Let's go to the next piece. We have got, this is a big one, but this is a bad ass one. Part of my language. 100% complete G1 Metroplex. And if, it's gonna take me a few minutes because I want to go over the accessories as fast as I can, but with this guy, it's all about the accessories. Like most you know, big G1s, they're always missing parts. And the parts get expensive. You could always part these out for more than they cost. Complete. It's just how it is. Like it's like a car, right? There is the G1. Uh, this is weapon right here. Let's put these down here so they don't fall off. Two of the blasters that go with him, right? So he's got the blasters. So there's G1 and a gorgeous Metroplex too. Uh, both the weapons here. So there are two two of his many accessories. So with this, I'm not going to go over every individual uh, weapon that he has. But I have double checked and triple checked to make sure it's complete. And it is complete. 100% complete in this bag, right? And of note, 
Uh, some uh, uh, three of the three missiles are still on the tree, which is cool. Uh, also of note to those that need to know, you have Scamper, which is the little uh, uh, car that goes inside his garage door looking contraption. And then Scamper, the biggest piece that's always missing with this one is Scamper's weapon. And it's expensive. It's like 50 bucks. Let me find it for you just so you can see it out there. Here's all, here's all the weapons, right? Everything's in there, accessories, more accessories here. I double and triple check because I wanted to make sure that it is complete for you guys because that is the big deal. And by the way, here's Scamper's weapon. Look how tiny this is and look how it's like 50, a $50 piece, sometimes more. Look how tiny, that's like, just would always get lost, right? And then also, I always sell things as they come in to us. So, for whatever reason, the individual kept part of the box, so I just thought it'd be cool to, let, to put that in there. So there's Metroplex, a piece of the box, just a piece of the cardboard. And then you have another piece of the cardboard here. And then you have, it also came with the um, the catalog, right? Super, super duper cool. And this piece is gorgeous, 100% complete. Metroplex is, PG1 is 249 it's just gorgeous. I don't know what I'm going to say about it. It sells itself. There's no issues with him. His hands are good. Everything's there. Weapons are good. And to find him complete like that, I've seen him sell for more. Just throwing it out there at a good price. PG1 is $249 and uh, Metroplex 100% complete. Everything is in there. That little weapon, like I said, is a fifth of the price right there just for that. So I know he's an expensive piece, but I mean, you consider versus Optimus or versus, you know, Megatron. He's not up there, up there, but he's, you know, still still pricey, right? But there he is. I'm sure some of these like um, Metroplex are fan favorites and people see them and they end up going pretty quickly. So if you know anybody that needs it, let me know because Metroplex is always a hot one. PG1 is 249, like I said. I apologize, I pour it down again. But he's all there with all his weapons and there's like 30 freaking pieces that go with him. But I did double check just to make sure. All there and a bag of chips. <laughs> okay, put him right there. Cool piece. Okay, what are we doing here? Okay, all right, folks, let's do this one. I'm just gonna throw, let's talk about this for a second. This next piece is our kind of big piece for the night. It's a Motu piece and it's expensive, but I've only seen like one or two other ones that I've had the opportunity to sell and it's been a while, uh, especially right now because Motu is just crazy. Um, here it is, this is PG number seven. This is 100% complete scare glow. Always faked. The cape is always faked. The weapon is always faked. Very, very clean example. He does. He glows in the dark as Scare Glow does. He is basically like the equivalent of like a vinyl cape jaw or something like that in the gray, like a grail status for a lot of a lot of mochi guys and girls. Let's show you the weapon. And this is the kicker. Uh, Scare Glow himself is expensive. Just, just, just loose. Couple hundred bucks. Just like probably not even without the, without the cape. Expensive figure. This right here, the glow in the dark halberd, is what makes this piece. The piece, piece, piece. <laughs> the green halberd that it, uh, most of them came with is pretty common. It's still expensive with the green halberd. It's more with this. So this is like the vinyl cape version of Jawa on steroids, right? It's already expensive to begin with. This just adds almost double the price in some in some instances, depending upon. Carded examples of this piece, you know, really high end, four or five thousand dollars for a carded scare glow with with a with a um, with a uh, glow in the dark halberd. Expensive, expensive. And this is a very nice example. I don't see any wear. The chest is gorgeous. You always see uh, the blacks, the black rubbed off. This is a, you know, like I said, it's a grail piece for a lot of people in the Motu world, man. This and like a Wonder Bread He-Man, just doesn't get much better as far as getting those loose, complete ones. Here he is with Halbert. Uh, just ones with green Halberts run about 500 bucks, if not more. They're expensive, I know, but uh, you don't see these every day. PG number seven is 749. Like I said, it is what it is. If you know about these, you know they're expensive. They're not your average everyday kind of collectible, if you will. They're always kind of fetching the crazy amount of money. But I don't get them very often, and when I do, they don't last. So it is what it is. There it is. PG7 is $7.49. And this this costs a lot of food, you know, or whoever's out there. Uh, it just is what it is. It's expensive. Like you guys are talking. It's uh, like meatballs with Tony. It's a cool one. So you don't see these come up very often with this. And these are heavily faked. As you can imagine, this is obviously legit. So there it is. And oh, also you get the uh, the mini comic that it came with. This is like a $25 comic by itself. And this is the one it came with. And there it is. PG7 is $749. That's an awesome piece. You don't see it very often. 
uh, especially come up in like you know like these kind of live deals they're usually handed over secretly to somebody else but anyway thought I'd throw it out there boom cool piece okay let's move on to some more stuff we have up oh, another G1 transformer you could feed a small country with that figure. you could for maybe a couple hours <laughs> it is what it is uh, PG up next is PG number 18 and this is an awesome piece too I really like some of these uh, number 18 is Joyride, G1 Joyride. And I just love the name and I love the damn figure. He was later on in the line like a lot of these, but man, look at him. Gorgeous. Weapons complete. And you have the Headmaster right there as well, or Power Master, Headmaster, call him what you will. Different type of thing. But he does come out, and, and then there's the bot. His legs open up, all that stuff. Once again, be careful with these if you ever come across them, because once you break the legs, you're done. You could super glue them, I guess, but they're still crazy. Uh, just, you know, might as well just buy a new one at that point. They get very expensive. There it is. PG-18 for Joyride. The Doom Buggy. Clear. Uh, excuse me, clear. Nice, clean. Got the shell sticker on the side. Uh, take the head out of there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I just love it because he's a Doom Buggy, man. Just badass. PG-18 is $59. That's like 150 meatballs. Uh, yeah, James, if you got it for that price... That's crazy. Uh, good. That's like finding a needle in a haystack. Congratulations. PG-18 is $59 for the uh, Joyride. Awesome, awesome figure. Like I said, you don't see clean examples of G1s are getting harder to find. Much like Star Wars or anything else, people are either grading stuff like this or just you know, not turning loose of it because they're just so nice, right? PG-18, $59 before, exactly. Motu's been on fire for the last couple years. And much like vintage Star Wars or whatever, it's just, it's just, it's just a hot toy right now, unfortunately for a lot of people. But fortunately, if you want it, you know we have it. So there you have it. PG eighteen fifty nine, and, and basically any toy line is, is 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 on fire right now due to COVID, due to everything. It's just expensive. Yep, smoking, smoking, smoking. He knows what I'm talking about. And I just so happened to get some Motu, and I wasn't seeking it out. Just just a weird deal. Okay, here's something odd. I do have some Star Wars stuff tonight. Uh, here's one of them. PG-13, this was from Star Wars Celebration. It was exclusive. And believe it or not, people pay some decent money for it. This is from only only available at Star Wars Celebration 2019 Chicago. There it is. There is a Shop the Galaxy from Amazon.com slash Star Wars. Super cool. I had a couple of these. I kept one of them. And uh, here you go. If you want a Star Wars uh, convention exclusive, PG-13 is $19. There it is for the bag. You get some super cool uh, graphics on the back. Uh, some design, you know, take this to your convention, go to your toy stores, whatever. I don't know toy stores left, hardly. Definitely not toys rough. PG-13 is 19 bucks for the uh, convention exclusive, which is pretty cool. $19 for the Amazon bag. Pretty cool, right? Okay, and then let's go over here. We have got... <laughs> it will only go higher. That's, that's true. That is true. This one is... Aha! Thank you for printing that money. I hear you, man. You, 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 Ivan just double checked. There's not even for sale on the open market on eBay right now with that with that Halbert. You just can't even find them. The green ones you find, uh, you can find them on card. Uh, I think the last one I think somebody won like a seventy gray one of like thirty five hundred bucks for it or something or whatever. I mean, open them up. <laughs> anyway, this is a cool one. Molar versus Skeletor fan favorite. From the Motu line, I just love it. It's super cool. And these are about 80 bucks, but hey, I'm gonna get them out, I need some room. Just knock off about 20 bucks off the price. PG number three is $59 from Molar versus Skeletor. That is super cool. Unopened, of course, brand new. Oh, there it is. PG three, $59 from Molar versus Skeletor. And of course, he's got his, uh, taking the Molar out right there. Good for a dentist. You got any dentist friends, that'd be a cool piece, right? Uh, there it is, PG-3359. bucks. This is like a, a steal for classics because even the single figures are like way more than that. But uh, get if you want to. Of course, Skeletor's in there laying down. His weapons are in the back. You can see it Well, way back in there. You can see it back there. Cool piece. Something different. I'm trying to get it out the door because it takes up some space. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. <laughs> Let's do... Where are we at? Do I have something up there? Oh. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Uh, this one's cool. Another G1 Transformer. PG-19. I have to check the name on this one, too. 
Oh, Grotesque is the name of this one. Monster Bot. And this is cool. These wings, always missing. Always, like 20 bucks a piece for these wings. Always missing. Got the weapon there. This is the Monster Bot called Grotesque. Look at him. So what happens is you can see, obviously he folds up, turns into uh, that character there, that creature. Kind of looks like a battle cat, actually, on the side, doesn't he? <laughs> anyway, that'd be a nice mashup. He-Man and Motu. Or Motu and the G1. PG-19, 100% complete. Grotesque. $69. Like I said... Really just knocking off 10 bucks off these, like what do you expect to pay like online or whatever. See if anybody wants them. They're, these are exceptional condition too. That's the big thing is like these are all nice and clean. They're not beat up. They're not played with heavily. You know, nice stiff joints. All the things you want to see out of a nice transformer. PG-19, $69 for grotesque. Got the wings there. The wings do pop off by the way. That's why they're always missing. You can check that out right there. Boom. There it is. Uh, man, I have not. I, actually, you know what? I've got one Dungeons & Dragons piece. and it's, I've kept, I'm not even a Dungeons & Dragons collector, per se, but I kept it because there's a photo of me opening one. There's a photo of me opening one, and so I kept that one that I came in a collection. It's a, it's a War Duke on a card, and I kept it because I have a picture of me opening one, and I wasn't really into Dungeons & Dragons back in the day. I think somebody gave me it as a gift, just as a, uh, a gift, like a present. And I opened it up, and I was like, man, I'm going to keep that one because it's unopened just because it was one of those things that, you know, hey, you have a memory associated with it, right? There it is. PG-19, $69. There is Grotesque G1 Transformer. Grotesque. There it is. That's a cool little holder for him. I didn't realize he had that. I would have left that in there. The more you know. Okay. There it is, uh, for Grotesque. Okay, what else I got up here? I have got, uh, I didn't have a whole lot tonight, I just pulled some G1s, not a whole lot of stuff. What's that? Uh, yeah, that's something a little out there. Oh, check this out. Now this one is just like an absolute, I've had this for a while. Uh, well, I say a while, a while for me is having it for more than a couple of weeks. Uh, usually, you know, things just sell. Because uh, if they don't sell, if it's something that's I need to sell, I'll just move it, right? If it's something that's you know, high end, I'll keep it if I need to, I'll trade it or whatever. This is basically you're getting this at at cost of grading, actually less than cost of grading, and um, the cost of the item. This is about a hundred and twenty dollar piece by itself. Um, I'm gonna put this out there. The grading of this piece is 50 to 60 bucks from AFA. This was an AFA graded piece. It's still in the poly bag. Uh, retail, probably 200, 250 bucks for this one, but I've got it out there for steel. This is, uh, I've had it showcased a few times. 2010 Classic Motu, uh, one dollar club attorney exclusive, right? It's still in the poly bag. I've showed this a couple times. I'm just gonna get this out the door today, and this is a steel. I'm just gonna mark it down at the lowest price you could ever find this because nobody's gonna sell, sell this because it's been graded. But I bought this in a lot. So PG, uh, big collection. PG4 is 149 That is, you couldn't buy that piece and grade it for that price. And that's a 9.0, by the way, graded. That's obviously a high grade. Uh, this is the Wondar, which is obviously the, uh, the the nod to the Wonder Man He-Man. So there you have it. But it's worth it. 2020 loan. There you go. I'm looking at, do you... Uh, yeah, so PG4 is 149 on this piece. That is awesome for a graded Motu Classics. This is like, I think these are listed at this price right now on websites not graded. So there you have it. Club Eternity exclusive, one dollar Classics 2010 Motu 9.0 grade. PG number four, and I'm gonna do this for somebody. I wanna include the shipping on that. And I guarantee you it's gonna cost me at least 10 to $15 to ship. So asterisk by that item. Is a ship price just to get it out here. Um, that's just a steal in any way, shape, or form for this piece because guess what? You're getting shipping included. It's heavy. It's going to cost $10 to $15 to ship. So really, think about it. Uh, typically, their price probably like $160, $170. So there you have it. PG4 is 149 Ship price on that. One dollar Club Eternity exclusive. And there's just a cool piece, right? Still in the poly bag too, so likely never opened. That's how I got it. There it is. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Up next, Star Wars piece, PG number four. Uh, let's call this PG number 44. 44. PG number four, I'm, I'm making up one. PG, uh, Scott M wanted that one. I would take that. I was surprised nobody got that because of what it was. And Scott, this will be bundled with your items for the night. That's a cool piece, man. You just, and just alone, it's just awesome, man. 
So there you have it. Okay, PG40, uh, number 44. Let's do this. This is a steal. PG44 is, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that better. I write that down. Hmm. Oh, I'm more post notes. I'm always out of damn post notes. Selling too much stuff. PG44, uh, pair of 40th anniversary glasses. Let's do it for $14. PG44, 40th anniversary, $14 for the Do or Do Not Try and the uh, No, I'm Your Father glass kit, right? Super cool, right? Drink your favorite beverages in there. That's pretty cool, Justin Davis. I'll get this to you, buddy, with your items for the night. Okay, let's do, what else do I got lined up? Do I have anything else lined up? All right, let's, let's do this. I want to make somebody a deal on this one. Um, this Metroplex, 100% complete, and this is a gorgeous Metroplex, like I already mentioned. I'm pretty much spot on with the pricing on that, but I'm going to make somebody happy with this one um, if they want it, because I'm just going to cut to the chase on it, and we're going to move along and go on the, down the road. This is, where is, okay. Well, what number is Metroplex on there? PG number one, right? PG number one. Check this out. Metroplex, 100% complete, gorgeous, gorgeous piece. I verified it, triple verified, everything's there, so you're getting everything. PG1. Man, let's just get this out of here. I'm, I, I'm, you can't find it for this price for a complete Metroplex in this shape, but I don't care. Let's move along. Let's move it along. Let's get some stuff out of here. PG1 is $199. Knocked off 50 bucks, and that is a steal and a half for a complete Metroplex with everything in there, scampers in there, everything is good to go. Gino Bozzi, that's a goodbye. I'm telling you, man. Oh, John to have this graded? Oh, <laughs> uh, probably like a hundred something dollars. I mean, transformers are pain in the butt to grade because there's so many accessories. Now, box ones are easier, obviously. Uh, it's a, but the grading companies, I mean, they take forever to grade these because they have to make a custom acrylic. This would be an expensive piece to grade. Probably, I'd say over a hundred, hundred fifty dollars to grade. I mean, just. And the time would take probably six months. Anyway, nice piece. Uh, who got that? Gino Bazzi? Yeah, Gino Bazzi. Good grab. Yeah, it is a good grab. Man, that's, that's just an awesome one. Let's move along. Let's see what else we're going to do. Um, uh, like I said, let's go over a couple things. I'm going to get out the door. This gorgeous scare glow with, uh, with Halbert. Halbert. PG7 is 749. I'm gonna to stick to my guns on that one because I don't see them very often and it's gorgeous and I really think it's right in line with the pricing what these have been sold and considering the fact that they're about six times more on a card uh, unless you want to buy a complete uh, a carded one. So there's a gorgeous scare glow with the, of course the I hate using the word rare but whatever use your own draw your own conclusions with that what that could mean very scarce. Is, is the nice way of saying really hard to get, right? I don't like using rare. It's just a, it's just a buzzword to like, this is rare, it's mint and rare. It's like, come on. Anyway, there you go for the Scare Glow. This is gorgeous piece on that one. And it comes with a comic as well, the mini comic that it came with. And this is, and these are, these even these are reproduced. People are faking these. I say faking them, whatever, reproducing them. And this is a nice comic as well from Mal made in Malaysia. Gorgeous. Anyway, cool piece there. And of course, if you saw anything else you liked, contact us. Let us know what you had. We're gonna get out of here. We're going to. We are going to uh, get y'all shipped off tomorrow. Combine some of your shipping from last night if you had a few things, and uh, let us know what you had. We'll get you taken care of. You PayPal and ship you out. Thank you guys for tuning in. We got more stuff coming in. I got more stuff to go through. I got more G ones and all kinds of stuff in Star Wars. Just throwing some different stuff out there for you guys tonight. Until next time, stay tuned. Well, you guys have a great night. Adios.